Hello, welcome to the Recognitive channel where we are about learning and relearning. This is a personal project that is sponsored by my free time. Let's start with a challenge. I will ask you to do a couple of predictions using this happiness scale that goes from not happy at all, one, and very happy, nine. I will ask you to put these numbers in a piece of paper. How happy are you at this moment? If you watch a good video, how happy would you feel afterwards? If you watch a bad video, how happy would you feel afterwards? Turn it upside down and now put it away. We will revisit it later. Let's talk about the impact bias. In this video, we will talk about a definition of the bias, some of the mechanisms that cause it, some research controversy, and a few personal cases. In other words, how it affects me. Have you ever dreaded an event that would make you feel very unpleasant or unhappy that does not seem so after the fact? Like a high school reunion that feels miserable before, but not so bad after it? Have you ever thought that an event would make you happier than it actually did? Like an award that you would get and it would make you the happiest person alive, but then it doesn't? Affective forecasting, also known as hedonic forecasting, is the act of making predictions of how we will feel in future events. This is the process used when trying to estimate how we will feel after such high school reunion or after winning that award. Affective forecasting is a widely researched cognitive process. But the video is about impact bias, is it not? What exactly is predicted in affective forecasting? The balance, whether it will make you feel generally good or generally bad, the duration of the feeling and the intensity of the feeling. What are the errors made? For duration, you can think about it shorter or longer than it actually is. As of intensity, you can think about it as stronger or weaker than it actually is. These are both the durability bias and the intensity bias. Balance doesn't normally have an error. So the impact bias is a combination of the durability bias and the intensity bias. Now that we have defined impact bias, I try to search for the other two sub-biases without success. They probably have another name, or maybe they are hidden among many other biases. There are six causes of the impact bias, and we will just go through all of them in detail. Miscontrol is almost like due to the multi-universe theory. When you conceptualize a future event, you normally have one event in mind with all the parameters fixed in a certain setting. You do not conceptualize all the possibilities within that event. So basically the one that you get to live and the one that you imagined are essentially different. When you're asked to forecast an event that you have never experienced, there is no evidence for forecasting. And even when you have some, you are forced to recall such experiences. In this process is prone to error. So may, you may also inaccurately forecast. Then we have motivated distortions. When we do predictions, we are also inspiring, comforting or frightening ourselves, like steering. So we may want to exaggerate the prediction to feel excitement or excessive fear in a defensive pessimism to avoid a negative event. Under correction is not well described in the literature I reviewed. My understanding is that because the intensity of the event is highest at the point of the event, then when we want to correct to the passage of time, we do not correct enough, expecting the feeling to last longer. I left focalism and immune neglect as last, as I think they are the most interesting, but also because the next part of the video requires a good understanding on these two. Focalism refers to the phenomenon when we are being asked to predict how we feel after an event. We tend to focus only on such event and we forego that the way we feel is an average of everything else that is going on with our lives. Everything. As we have a physical immune system, we also have a psychological immune system that is trying to preserve our emotional well-being. As examples, you can think of a job application that is rejected. 
your immune system will trigger thoughts like the interviewer was a jerk as opposed to thinking that there is something wrong with our own profile or something they didn't like. Another example could be a termination of our relationship. The perspective towards the partner unconsciously shifts as my partner was not what I expected, but they were just like this before the breakup. And this is opposed to thinking that they might not have liked you all along. The process behind immune neglect is called sense making. This is a process that can help explain either negative or positive events, and it triggers these sequential steps. We pay attention to winning an award, we are happy because we got the award, we start explaining that we got the award maybe because of luck or other more grounded reason, and then we adapt and we normalize what we just live, diminishing or decreasing the emotional reaction. Now let's go to my examples. Misconstrual. I am obsessive when losing flights. I do a little bit of distortion here, but when I think about missing a flight, I think of the worst parameters there are, just the worst. For inaccurate theories, I always thought of playing golf as boring, so I avoided it. Recently I learned that it is not that boring. For motivated distortions, I can tell you an example that every year I convinced myself that the Independence Day party was going to be great, and it never was. For undercorrection, I can tell you that recently I got a salary increase, and the joy of receiving it lasted way less than I thought it would. About focalism, when think about it, a new job, if the job is not that good, then my life will suck. And actually, the job is not everything your life is about, right? And that also applies before you apply for the new job. For immune neglect, I am sometimes called for being too harsh on myself. There are good things that I've done and I can be proud of them, not just normalize them and say, oh, they're just things I did. Why is it important to fight the bias? We're all striving and working towards goals that we consider will make us happy. When we overestimate how happy we will be or how long it will last, this bias may be wrongfully shaping our decision. For the bias in treatments, we can think about an anti-misconstrual. Think of all the ways an event can play, then average it. For theories, get other people's opinion, and also be humble in your inability to forecast. For focalism, when you are having feelings about a certain event, ensure that they are about the event, or maybe other events, or the entire situation. And for immune neglect, you need to recognize. Think again. We move now to a little bit of controversy, and not the one in Wikipedia. This is related to focalism and also the concept of happiness. Is happiness a feeling, concept, or a mood? Probably this is theoretically clear, but when you ask a question to someone if they're happy, what question are they answering? And this controversy is what I would call a literal nerd battle, where there are two corps of scientists having a discussion. I would like to call it scientific discussion, but you will see that it's a little bit far away from that. On the left corner, we have the source, the origin, the great Timothy Wilson and Daniel Gilbert, who are responsible for 90% of the literature that this video is based on. On the right corner, we have Linda Levine, Robin Kaplan, Heather Lynch, and Martin Safer, who thought it would be a good idea to investigate this bias. Linda and co start with the offensive. They say that when you feel happy is normally about something and not in general. They also basically accuse Wilson and Gilbert of congruence bias, asking questions to get the impact they want to get. They also did a meta-analysis that disproves the effect that is being claimed, or at least reduces its significance. Let's do a pause. Meta-analysis is a science of science, meaning using many articles, many research articles, to find if all together all the data can support the phenomenon that someone is claiming. These people read 44 articles and did some statistics. Let's see what they got from the original authors. Your literature review is biased. You are checking articles that prove your point. You are looking for evidence of what you already think and your meta-analysis sucks and is biased. Some of your classifications are nonsensical. 
The last reply addressed every point, but honestly, for the sakes of this video, it would be just going over the points in the first one. I tried to find more research and more responses, but I didn't find anything. So this might be the end of this battle. I will leave you with this phrase that I don't remember where it comes from. Research results are provisional. Let's evaluate the video. I consider that I scored a 4.5. The weakness is the examples. And now we turn to our roulette for the topic of the next video. And the winner is positivity effect. Wait a moment. I will ask you now to revisit the original challenge. How happy are you at this moment after watching this video? Any over predictions? Any under predictions? Were you affected by impact bias? Comment below. See you in the next episode. This is the Recognitive channel. Thank you for watching.